This summer, Emma Coburn has been running all over her hometown of Crested Butte. I love Crested Butte so much. It's my home, it's where I grew up, it's where my family still lives. It's where she grew up and where she's most comfortable when training for a big race like the Olympic trials. No place beats Crested Butte. Um, the altitude, the weather, the trails, the dirt roads, the people. Hi, Emma. Hi. Oh, hey, Eddie. Everything about it um, just breeds this environment that creates success for me. In school, the five foot eight athlete played volleyball and basketball, but Emma found her path. But she does win and defend her title. Running for CU Boulder. Plays with Emma Coburn all by herself. Ralphie and Chip and the Buffs and black and gold, that has just been my universe for my whole life. Emma Coburn has She would go on to win. She's an eight time national champion that I'm in an event that has hurdles and barriers and a water jump. And race at the Olympics in 2012 and at the games in Rio where Emma became the first U.S. woman to ever win an Olympic medal in steeplechase. And despite it all. It's hard every single year. It's never been easy. It's never been handed to me. Um, so I know I have to bring my A game there. Emma says in her event, there are no guarantees and won't pack for Tokyo until she goes to the Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon and earns her spot on the Olympic team. I'm never going to count myself on that Olympic team until I cross the line in Eugene in the top three. And good luck to Emma. She'll race today and you can watch her on NBCSN 8 o'clock when she makes the Olympic team. Then she'll head off to the Olympics, which start July 23rd, less than a month from today. And while Emma works on her place in history, one track and field legend stopped by the U.S. Olympic Paralympic Museum in Colorado Springs to see some of that history for himself. We're talking about the one and only Carl Lewis, one of the most decorated athletes in Olympic history. He's got nine Olympic medals, four of those gold from his time at the games in Los Angeles, Seoul, Barcelona, and Atlanta. His history can be seen at that U.S. Olympic Paralympic Museum, and so he decided to stop by and look for himself. And while he was a long jumper, the 59-year-old former track star says he still gets challenged to race every day, including while he was walking into the Olympic Museum. I'm asked to, to race probably on an average eight times a week somewhere, whether it's in the airport or it's at the store or if it's different. And it's all ages. Matter of fact, someone just did on the way in here and it was a six year old, it was a little girl and six or so. And so um, I wasn't gonna race her because she'd have any shoes on. So she probably ran out of them. So I'm not touching her. <laughs> Never race anyone that challenges you to a race that they're not wearing any shoes. These days, Carl is a coach down at the University of Houston. He says he loves the fact that there's now an Olympic Paralympic Museum that preserves Olympic history because he says a lot of his track stars who are in their 20s don't think that history starts anytime before the 2000s. Natasha Corey, as an old guy myself, I can tell you, history started long before the 2000s. Yes, you've been to yes. many of them. So I'm hoping that your camera stays with us this last this time because last <laughs> hour it went black. But I was just curious, we're talking about the Olympics. Can you believe that it's actually going to happen? I know, it's been so strange, right? I mean, they've obviously been postponed a year and then for that entire year, it's it, are they going to have it? Mm -hmm. What kind of restrictions are they going to have? Who can even go? We now know there's going to be some domestic fans that are going to go, but not foreign fans still. They won't be allowed to go. A lot of people are going to be watching from the United States, friends and families of all these athletes, but it's so strange because it's been a twisty, turny road just it to has. get to this point. And no, cheering, no cheering and no shouting, no alcohol. No alcohol. It's so weird. No. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Maybe it's what kind of Olympics are these? Yes, right. Exactly. Right? <laughs> cheer. You can cheer and drink all you want on your couch. There you go. <laughs> That's the way to do it. All right, Matt Renew, thank you.